Hi, hey, Paul. How's it going? Yeah, good, thank you. I was just um, having a bit of a side thought about how kind of intense the show get, or how intense shows get when they get smaller and there's fewer contestants. Because you can't, I, I mean, clearly from the, the traitors, no one can trust anyone at this point. Um, yeah, and they have to, uh, they have to slightly pad it out um, because yeah. there's fewer people and fewer exciting things. I don't know where that feedback's coming from. Is that me or you? Uh, are you hearing feedback? It's it's all right now, I think. I did for a second, but I think it's okay now. Yeah. Um, do, you watch, do you watch The Apprentice? I have done. Uh, not recently, but yeah. I'm thinking about doing this for The Apprentice, so I need an apprentice apprentice to come on with me for it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's weird. You were like looking at your notes to think that... Um, kind of feels like the show's going to be finished on Friday. Yeah, I was trying to figure out the numbers because I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just being blind, but is there an indication to how many are left? Yeah, I'm looking at it here, right? You got, we'll go through them all. You got Andrew as a traitor. You got Harry as a traitor and you got Ross as a traitor. Yeah. And the faithful are Evie, I think is one of the blonde ladies that I confuse with each other. Uh, oh, yeah. You got Jasmine. <laughs> Yeah. You've got Jazz, you've got Molly, you've got Zach. So it's possible that they could get three out by Friday and go to a final. Joe says uh, his family are all watching and loving it, but you haven't. he hasn't watched it himself. Joe, you should watch it. It's really good. Yeah, sure. um, it's possible that they could get three out and do the finale on Friday, or maybe they could get... Because they're not getting someone out tonight, oh, today, because Harry's just got the shield. They might have, like, a, it's got to finish either, like, Friday or next week. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, yeah. So, we were talking about uh, episode seven, eight, and nine. I mean, I did feel sorry for Ross in episode seven, the funeral of his mother, which is a kind of... I felt really I, sad, because... Obviously, as you know, like on every every time we chat, I mention how I'm like really rooting for Diane and Ross, and it was kind of sad for me uh, to see Diane go, and that's as well. Also, felt sorry for Ross, um, but I also just don't understand how he didn't give over any indication to anyone that that was his mum. You know, I thought finally, okay, it's gonna spill, but it didn't. He, it's amazing, really, how he hasn't actually just said the word mum. Oh, when I when that happened to mum, or just in passing, you know? Um, Why do you think that is, though? I just think he's, like, super well trained and he's on his toes, you know? And, and now, now he hasn't revealed it. I don't know why he hasn't revealed it as of now, because it doesn't affect anything. Although... Maybe it makes him a bit more suspicious yes. if it says, oh, well, you must have a secret. Yes, that's exactly what I was thinking. And maybe, I mean, yeah, maybe he, he, that was what he was concerned about. Um, but it, I mean, that whole scene was very dramatic, wasn't it? And the music as well made me chuckle a little because it, yeah, it was kind of, um, I mean, I like how they dramatize everything. It does make it yeah. good. You had some insider detail about the recruitment. Everyone's staying up late to recruit Ross. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, I've heard from some of the, the team that, um, or the crew, should I say, that uh, they had to stay up until 3 a.m. because they were trying to get the right shot of him. He, like, walks through the corridor, doesn't he? And they show from the outside of the castle, and you can kind of see him through the windows. But it's... They could have used a generic shot and no one would have ever known because you can't really see him. Uh, but apparently, yeah, they had to stay up filming until 3 a.m. for that, which must have been exhausting. Really um, exhausting. He did a great little wink to the camera. Did you see that when he was when he was in the car talking about Diane and he did a little wink to the camera? It was really funny. Yeah, I did see that. Um, but again, it's kind of odd that like no one, no one else has picked up on anything because there, there was a conversation in like one of the first episodes around um people look was it like one of the other guys looking like diane or something yeah and they like, thought paul was diane's son but it's odd that the conversation never like continued or got brought up again if, if that feeling was there yes zach who is like 
it's like a little pit bull. He is quite perceptive. Yeah. Uh, he pointed out that he thought Paul could be Diane's mum, and you're right. That conversation just died and didn't go anywhere. Yeah. Um, who do you think from the whole cast? You mentioned it earlier, I think, um, or maybe you mentioned it in the notes. Who do you think is going to be like a breakout star, and we'll have like a micro celebrity? existence for a little bit as the person from the traitors so i think there's two but who do you think um i think the main one is harry because he's this kind of like cheeky guy that is very likable um <clears throat> and seems to yeah seem <clears throat> i mean everyone likes him so much that they can't even see through <clears throat> and no one is suspecting him as a traitor um but anyway i think yeah i think he is a likable character i think browns will like want to pick up on that and, and work with him um and obviously he's got a military career so i don't know what that means for that um but he's kind of an interesting character uh, who do you think well i think there's three um like did you watch series one i don't know if you did or not no, i didn't watch series one there was a guy called wilf who got a little bit of traction but i think he just wanted to go back to his regular job and there was a woman called maddie who was really sweet really funny and um she did quite well. She's ended up getting like an actual acting role on Hollyoaks and she was in a few other things and she's quite active on social media in a kind of influency way. So I agree with you on Harry, except I just want to say about Harry, um, I don't know, I'm just wondering now whether there is a, a version of this, right, bear with me, that Jazz, who is very perceptive, turns his attention on Harry Imagine if he did that tonight. Now, obviously, he can't do it right now because, well, overnight, because Harry has the shield. So someone's going to go. That will depend who goes. If Jazz is still there. If he gets Harry out, Jazz is going to be regarded as some sort of leader because Jazz got Paul out. And now if he gets Harry out, I just wonder if there are going to be whispers about Harry before the end. Yeah. It's the, yeah, it's highly possible. Highly likely. I yeah. I'm really not sure. We can ask each other at the end who we would like to win. And like, I think there's other people who, not that I dislike them, I just feel like maybe they're a bit bland or they haven't done enough. I don't really want them to win. Like certain people, I wouldn't mind if they won. Let's do that at the end, we'll go through them. So Harry, I think for the same reasons as you could have a little career. Diane is already having a career. She's been all over. Like every time I look on the internet, she's on This Morning, she's on yeah. Breakfast News. She's loving it and actually turned out to be very good value. She, I read the other day she's a new gay icon. I don't know why that is, but that was kind of amusing. Yeah, I also kind of find it refreshing to see someone maybe of like that's less typical kind of do well from it and kind of get exposure because <clears throat> she's obviously relatable to a lot of people. Um, however, these shows typically tend to have lots of young people um and then it's kind of nice to see someone of a different age a different background you know someone that was just a teacher um but super interesting as a character to watch and i find that quite refreshing to see to be honest yeah and she's also i think quite likable you know she's a sort of mum. i think a lot of people said oh it'd be nice i wish she was my mum." that sort of person yeah. you know but she'd be a laugh um the other person then who i think i predict things for who may have played the greatest traitor game of all time, but so much so that he he like couldn't last, was, of course, Paul. Uh, I mean, I was looking at the website, and the even Paul's official picture is so staged. He's, like, doing this, like, you know, this crazy look. Um, and he's chiselled with his red hair. He must have been psychopathic to be doing the things he was doing, but he was tremendous value. Yeah, I think you're right. I, I, it's weird because I started to not like Paul and then I had to remind myself, hang on, he, he didn't choose to be a traitor. He had to like play that. So yeah, it's, it'd be interesting if you could see like a snippet of what they would be like if they were the opposite, you know, if they were like a faithful or if they were a faithful, see them as a traitor and see how they'd interact. What was that thing you picked up on in episode eight? You said something odd happened as if they were told. As Paul announced he was a traitor, the remaining traitors remained seated and the faithful were all cheering and standing up to celebrate. I didn't pick up on that. Yeah, so they showed like a three second clip. It was really short. <clears throat> and basically, um, when Paul said, <clears throat> I'm a traitor, 
they immediately panned over to everyone around the round table and um i now I, i'm gonna struggle to remember the names but obviously harry ross and uh what's his name andrew andrew they they the three of them were sat down and they looked semi flat kind of like they were like going like this like thumbs up but kind of flat and everyone else was jumping and cheering and dancing and i'm like hang on that that must have been manufactured by the the producers because you know I, I, it surely isn't coincidental and it's also a bit obvious if they're sat down um looking a bit like flat and everyone else is cheering like was that coincidental was that put there did anyone pick up on it like in the next episode will anyone have picked up on the fact that they were all sat down and not cheering maybe but it was kind of interesting yeah i didn't notice that but it is interesting what do you think they're gonna do uh so they've got the shield now so yeah. harry and ross and andrew are going to come down tonight in the morning and they're going to do some story about how they tried to kill Harry, but Harry had the shield. Yeah. And then Ross says they want to kill Jasmine. Uh, is it ja Which one's Jasmine? Or do you mean Jack? Is it Jasmine? Oh, Jasmine, yeah, yeah. Um... But in order to be able to kill Jasmine, they have to get through another round table first. Yeah. Yeah, they do. All right, let's go through them, right? And here's our little game to finish. I'm going to go through the remaining contestants, and what we have to do, each of us, is say, I don't mind if they win, or I don't really want them to win because they haven't done enough. Do you know what I mean? So, okay. We got uh, Andrew from Wales with his mysterious scars, which I haven't quite figured out what the scars on the back of his neck are, although he has mentioned them. Don't quite know what they are yet. Yeah, they're, they're quite big as well. They look severe. They look as though someone tried to hack off his head at some point. <laughs> Something serious happened there. Yeah. I'm I'm saying I would be happy if he won because I find him very likable and he's, he's, he made me laugh when he turned up as a traitor. He was like, spent two episodes. Can't believe it. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I just think he's like a nice guy. Probably deserves the money and like, yeah, his likable character. Actually, he could be someone as well that you probably see on the odd sort of like ad or TV thing, like yeah, as, especially in Wales, just as a you know nice guy. Yeah, yeah, actually, they could get like him and Diane on Gogglebox or something, yeah, yeah. that kind of thing. Okay, the next one is Evie, who's the blonde girl. Uh, I'm going. I'm going. I don't want her to win. She hasn't done that much for me. No, I agree. I. I always used to get her confused with Charlie. Charlie, yes. I was for casting. Charlie a bit, to be honest. Um, I think you've got to earn it to uh, to deserve it. You've got to work for it. Harry, absolutely, 100%. I think we must both agree. He has played a great game. Yeah, he's in, he's been incredibly smart with it. Um, really smart. Incredibly smart. You know what, Jasmine, if she were somehow to get through and win, I don't mind because she's made an effort. She's been bolshy. She's been talkative. She's been active. The Was it... Hang on. I there's another, There was another... Uh, was it, I used to get confused with... I can't remember if it was Kyra or Jasmine and the first episode. Yes. Where, where they... what One of them took the uh, shield and then, like... Where it was a bit hypocritical the next day, and yes. I, I can't which one it was, but I was like, oh, I'm not too keen on these characters. But then they, I warmed to them a lot. I think so. it's kind of forgotten about now. Yeah, definitely. Um, I tell you who is next, who I think has also played a great game, is Jazz. As a, I mean, it is hard to be a faithful and to stay in. <laughs> he's been, like, quiet, but then he's been, like, you know, dropping these bombs on people periodically. I've liked him a lot. He's actually quite an interesting guy. He's a good-looking, like, you know, quite serious-looking guy. I like him, and I, I'd be happy if he wins. Yeah, um, I'd be happy if he wins. I I kind of in two minds because he is quite quiet and isn't the most interesting of the face of it to watch. Um, but when you think about the strategy, he's very switched on and very, I don't know if he even really has much strategy, but he's like super switched on and he, he can see through people very quickly. 
Um, so I'd be really happy if he won. He seems like a decent guy. Hi, Cheeky, and hi, Annie. I think Cheeky, I know, is on the west co east coast, rather. And uh, Annie, I think you might be on the west coast. We're talking about the Traitors UK, and I hope that the Traitors US is suddenly going to uh, appear to us. I know it started. Um, uh, I was talking to Jeff Keyes about doing his own show on that. Um, then you got Molly, Ross, and Zach. So Molly, I'm afraid for me, hasn't done enough. She's bland. Yeah, she's so bland. And because isn't it? Is it Charlie as well? That's also from Bristol. There's like I think there's two two of them. And I just like between them, like yeah, Molly's so bland in comparison. But yeah, I don't know. Ross. Absolutely. He's good value. He's funny. He's somehow still there despite basically guessing it wrong at every um, round table. <laughs> yeah, he I don't know. Really like... Very well. Yeah, I think he's like quite, a... well, he seems like quite a creative guy um, and quite like interesting. I, I think he will go far. I don't, I don't know if he, I think when it gets to the very final part of the show, I think he may not have that like strategic mind to really win, but I think he'll go far. Um, especially as just like a likable character. Yeah. Cheeky Baby says he is watching Traitors US season two. No spoilers because we haven't watched that yet. We're hoping to get that. But Cheeky Baby has also started watching Traitors Australia series one, which I have watched is a classic classic series did you watch that one george no i haven't i didn't know there was one it's brilliant actually i highly recommend you watching it there's some reveals in that it was such an enjoyable show we totally binged traitors australia series one it was very very good i can't spoil it. i'll tell you separately because if i tell you something cheeky baby i don't want to spoil it for you there's a person in there cheeky come back to me uh there are float so many floaters up to halfway through in oz yes there are, there are, but I do remember it. They also had, well, you'll know this because Cheeky's watched over halfway. They had a psychic in, in the um, Australian one who said, I know who they are, and then promptly left the show. She walked off. She's the only one I've seen. She didn't get banished or murdered. She, she walked off. So finally, and then we'll finish in our UK show, we've got Zach, who I think is a kind of a little terrier, like a pit bull. I think... He'd probably get on my nerves if I was with him, but I would be um, okay if Zach won because he's made an effort. Yeah, he makes a, he does make a lot of effort, but I do agree. He's not the most interesting to watch. Um, and like, yeah, I don't know. There's nothing really stands out, but yeah. I'm yeah, she sure. Cheeky says Chloe was special, referring to the Australian psyche. She was special, actually. I tried to get some of those Australians to come on as a guest, but no luck. Um, tell us your last factoid, George, about bookings to the castle. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a really random fact. But uh, after the first season of The Traitors UK, uh, so last year, uh, Trainline, which is like the UK's largest uh, train booking site, had a 25% increase in sales to Inverness in Scotland um, for January 2023 compared to 2022, um, which is actually pretty mad because in the UK, a huge amount of people use trains to travel up and down the country. So for a 25% increase from one show on TV is just, I think, crazy, actually. Um, yeah. And that shows kind of the power of these shows. Yeah. Um, so, I know yeah. the, the USA yeah. one is set in the same castle with yeah. Alan Cumming. I think the Australian one wasn't. It was set somewhere else. Maybe it was set in a house or something. But um, yes. Okay. All right. Very good. I'll be watching tonight. I liked the uh, TikTok video you sent me. I'll be making my notes. And um, it'll either finish on Friday or next week. But we'll probably do one more as a quick roundup next week just to, to finish off. Sounds good. Sounds All good. right, Cheeky. See you later. Sumabuki. Enjoy your show at two hour time. And uh, Joe, thanks for coming, and Annie, um, and see you all later. All right. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.